the other uh, last year was the first year that we did not well I won't say it was the first year but last year we did not budget anything for the rec center along with the senior center so that's why you see all the blanks in the 2015 appropriations in 2016. I mean, going back to uh, the FOIA for the dispatch center, for the professional fee, is that the fee that is uh, based on how many calls there are? No, this is one quarter. We split it this year, and the mayor may be able to speak more on that, but uh, we negotiate that we would just pay one fourth since there's four centers involved. Originally, they wanted us to pay us being made by almost 29%. They had some formula where it was different but we sort of persisted that we were only going to pay 25%. So this is one-fourth for this year. Now, in 2016, you know, I, I called for the budget. It's not ready yet. They have a new administrator there. I haven't met this person. I don't know if Captain Hanson or the mayor has met him. But anyway, uh, hopefully we'll get a budget for next year. And the methodology that will be used has not been shared at this point, at least not with me. I don't know if they heard but it's going to be on calls, or we still going to do it. It's going to be on calls. It's going to be on calls. So we're going to get an increase. Okay, that's what so, uh, A big one. That's what we got. In 2016. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, next year. But not as big as Garfield. They're higher than we are. Mm -hmm. And the professional services also uh, supports the administrative, doesn't it? You mean for the SECC? Mm -hmm. That's everything. The salaries, mm -hmm. yes. I mean, it's also the overhead, <clears throat> the insurances, and office supplies, everything that's related to that, any overhead, variable expenses, and also fixed costs as well. Okay, on the next page, page four, um, this is really the building department, and we're still sort of waiting. We're not quite sure what's going on with the uh, services in terms of the contractual. Uh, the company that were servicing the city, MBIS, is, I guess, no longer uh, providing that service to the city. So there's another company that we're trying to negotiate with. And not sure how that'll fall out. Surely by the time we do the permanent budget in April, we should have some more definite figures. Okay, so on page five, um, nothing significant other than, like I say, some of the expenses. Um, the staff should be commended because everyone really went overboard not to spend money. For the most part, we would just pay them salaries and any emergency expenses to uh, keep our vehicles running. So hopefully a lot of that will go away with the four new cars that were vehicles for the police and the a new fire truck and also the ambulance. So our hope is that our repairs will go down and they're also on the warranty for that should be signed. So for the most part, basically all we were doing this year is paying salary and emergency expenses. On page six, you will notice that there is no budget for the mechanics uh, department. At this time, the mechanics department is not included in the budget. I don't know if the mayor would like to speak more to that, but uh, the 175000 uh, would probably be used to have all set if any repairs that we have for that department, I mean for the city. We were having to send out so many cars to have them fixed. So, <coughs> Who's going to do the regular maintenance? Well, most of, a lot of the maintenance is being done by the various dealerships around the city, repair. Changing tires and oil changes and things like that. That I can't, I'm just, I'm sorry. Privatized. That's the word you're looking for, right? Yes, that, like I say, and or either some maintenance agreements with the various, um, body shops and repairs. A lot of that goes out anyway. We have to send a lot for oil changes and tire changes and stuff. Understand. We can send it out on Broadway like Borowski mm -hmm. and the yes, we are. business next door to him, you know, local businesses will do it. 
we've been doing some of that anyway. Mm -hmm. Pretty much everything goes out. So as you peruse the rest of the pages, uh, you can see you know, what the fluctuation of savings of the various departments. <clears throat> oh, one thing uh, regarding mechanics. If we'll be sending vehicles to other businesses to have them have their tires changed, oil changed, mm -hmm. all the repairs and things, where is that in the budget? The seven vehicle repairs and most of that is under the um, operations for the fire and police, which is the ambulance building, which is fund 252. Um, there's a couple of things that we're thinking is trying to partner and share mechanics with some of our neighbors. Uh, and like I could say, work out maintenance agreement for some of our local businesses so that we'll be able to have those uh, services. And our hope is that with the new cars that we're getting, we're actually getting six new vehicles. That should really cut down a lot because a lot of the things for the fire cannot be fixed in house anyway. We're paying two and three thousand dollars a pop to send out when the fire engine to fend the fire in these places. A lot of our specialized repairs. What does the service department think of the idea of sending everything to the private mm -hmm. owners? It's their idea. It's their idea? Mm -hmm. They think that's better. Yeah. Well, with only one mechanic. Uh, everything piles up, yeah. and it gets to, it just gets backlogged. Mm -hmm. You have to go to the service uh, yard, and you see that the car is just backed up. Not good. But this idea came from the service department. <clears throat> oh, for a long time, yeah. You've been going back over a year. <clears throat> the mechanic that's working was originally supposed to retire in 2014, and then. Uh, reneged on his letter of intent and stuck around. So we were trying to do this over a year ago. So, so when we have a breakdown, how minor or major it might be, with a snowplow. Yes. We got to wait to send it out. We can't come in. At we send it out anyway. All the work was going on last year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. We've said hundreds of thousands, of hundreds of mm -hmm. thousands of the work. So all no. of it was going out. No, I didn't say all. Oh, yes. Someone just pretty, said well, pretty much. I'm <laughs> just yeah. saying a lot of the major repairs yeah. and things were yeah. sitting out. So much mm -hmm. of it. But, but not all, all of it. Well, no. I mean, I'm sure. You know, I don't supervise him, and I'm not sure what he does all day. But I'm assuming that he's doing something. Now, how minor, major, I don't know. Because there was some uh, discussion about purchasing some replacement parts, I think it was last winter, mm -hmm. so that a salt truck could be fixed. Mm -hmm. So if we don't have a mechanic to do that, we will have to get in line with whoever else is sending their equipment to these other places to get them fixed. We won't have that option anymore to get something fixed, is that right? Most of the trucks went up to Liberty Ford. So. You know that huh. you're talking about our salt trucks. Well, I'm talking trucks. not just about the vehicle, but the equipment that's attached to it, like the salt boxes. Oh, okay. Or the, plows. the spreader. Okay, right. Yeah. And your question or your plans. so are those going to be sent out somewhere as well to be fixed? They have been going out to be fixed. Yes. All of them. Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I can't give you a percentage, but I would say it's probably about probably about ninety percent. You know, we have major, major breakdowns on those trucks. So they're old. Yeah, they're like from 08, 09. Mm -hmm. Well, old. contracting yeah. to a private contractor is not going to fix the age of our vehicles. No, but, no, I'm, but what I'm trying to say is the wear and tear is happening a lot more. The breakdowns are happening a lot more. That might be actually an argument to keep someone on staff rather than eliminate it. Well, my experience, at least I've been told they sit anyway because the volume is more than this one person can handle. So I guess it sit there or sit at a repair shop or wherever. Well, the, the turnaround time will be much quicker if it's outsourced. Mm -hmm. And everybody has to realize is we don't have the manpower. You know, I work with mechanics and technicians and they can only do so much in an eight hour day. Sometimes it might be one truck. It might take a couple days to fix that truck. 
you know, where a shop who has 15 mechanics might be able to turn it around in four or five hours. I mean, depending on the extent of it. It'll take four or five hours to get it down to the lot. No. To get you at two, yeah, get two people in the in the winter time when you're fixing it, when a snow plow goes down, you got to pull do someone know, else. Do you know where the out service is? It's right on Broadway. It's, thank, it's thank two you. miles away. So yeah, four or five you gotta hours. Pull, you got to pull someone off of a snow plow, two people to get that one down there, deliver it, get the paperwork. Then are they going to sit there while it's getting fixed? No, they're probably going to come back and they got to drive back down. So no, it's not as simple as oh, four or five hours and we're up again. It'll never be that simple. Secondly, I never said we, it was going to be that simple. I said you it's, it's quicker alluded, turnaround. You Bill. alluded to how simple it would be. Thank you. No, so, I, I know exactly it how simple be it would be simple. because when you have a choice of 15 mechanics or one, what would you rather have? I'm sure that we're going to twist the business owner's arm too to do our stuff right away. Not the people who have been waiting for two weeks to get their stuff fixed. So yeah, we're just going to get automatic to the, to the top of the list. list. That's not the way it works. So. What I would say is a concern is that if we have if we have someone, we have a mechanic on our stand, we can tell them exactly what needs fixed. We don't have to wait two weeks to fix something if there's two week backlog. We say the snow plow went down, those that that uh, preventive maintenance, those other things need to wait and get this fixed right now. We're not going to be able to just make that demand of a private company whenever we feel like it. That's something that should be considered in this and whether this actually came from the service department. Who knows that this actually originated with this. I've never heard this discussion from the service department. All the times I've talked, and we need to privatize. We need to get all this stuff out there. So it, did it actually come from them? I don't know. The claim is that it has. I guess something that should be checked into. What does the service department think about this? Before we decide we're gonna eliminate their, their service man, what do they think about it? We have some people telling us about the finances of it, but what are the practical implications? I think that we need to know that simply before we just cross out an entire department. How uh, are you defining department. as the service department? You want us to ask each worker? Is Don't play games you're... with me. No, I mean, I've that's heard, what I'm asking. I've heard the comments. You want us to ask? I heard a comment. We know who the service department is. Well, who is We it? don't need a specific delineation you're saying of the individuals. Who, tell us who that is. So, thank you. That's my consideration Tell us for who that. it is. Thank you. Is it one person or five or six or seven or, you know, who is it? Who do you want us to talk to? And I think there's a danger in eliminating yes. this too, and not to be argumentative, but if you got more than one vehicle down, if you got five down, our guy's working on one and four go out, but you always have that one there for major or minor repairs that again, I think that might happen in the middle of the night that the shop down the street might be bogged down himself too. So. But there's more than just one shop down the street. I'm sure that they call around to find out. And, and they have to have a group of vendors. We're not just taking it to the one place. Well, we haven't even done anything yet. Captain, do you have a comment, please? Can I use my train of thought? Per oh, I'm sorry, yeah. have someone yeah. else interrupted. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll Go ahead, oh, please. And, and, and besides, unless they're doing it, their mechanics, work at a lot less pay than our mechanic anytime it's one-on-one -on -one, let's say they're paying equal with their overhead and profit we're going to be paying out more unless their mechanics are working for a whole lot less than ours work and this year our mechanic worked all year he did something for seventy-seven thousand dollars. i would I'm, i would assume this year he did so, minor so, repairs he has not fixed anything major mm -hmm. All the major stuff has gone out, consistently gone out. But there was enough minor repairs for him to be working full time. That's not the only thing he does as far as minor repairs. I mean, it's talking about oil changes or tune-ups or brakes or things like that once in a while, yeah. But one guy isn't going to make or break this idea. Okay, Captain, please. The only thing I can speak to is police vehicles, but I can tell you another thing that hasn't come up yet is when you have a mechanic, it's definitely a benefit to have a mechanic. One of, one of the other downsides, though, is that that mechanic has to be certified in each of the systems that he's going to work on or you void warranties on the equipment that you have. We had that problem when we switched from the Fords to the Dodges, plus we have all this other police equipment. If you're gonna, I, I would 
take that out to service vehicles where you have different equipment on the back of the truck, you have a different, mm -hmm. one guy cannot be certified in all these different things. That's a problem. Stuff's going to get sent out anyway, so you keep your warranties. It's just it's just an issue when you only have one guy. If we had the ability to have four or five different mechanics, I mean, just to get someone trained in all those different systems would, would he take him out half the year. So I know that's something we've dealt with over the years in the police department. But it's another, it'll cost, another thing it'll to think cost about. you a fortune in software alone just to be able to access them. I think uh, Irene's uh, comment about uh, trying to um, resource other communities and uh, use their, in fact we do, I think the fire department actually uses the um, Bedford, I think. Uh, we use Bedford Heights Bedford, too. Yeah, and Bedford Heights as well. And Garfield Heights. Because uh, occasionally they do have people who are competent with these small, minor kinds of things. So yes, that's, that's an ideal thing. Okay, let's move and on. And if I may, you know, all the municipalities do not have mechanics. I've worked in municipalities that do not have mechanics. And also, uh, as I have stated, we're going to try, my staff and I, to go to some of the vendors and try to work out deals, which I've done before, to establish a fixed cost rate mm -hmm. versus just the going rate. So there's other options that you know we can work out to try this. And I've also discussed some of this with the service director to check around with his counterparts to see if there's anyone who has willing to share or, you know. Okay, move right along. I mean, my network is on double, because every department is it, double. And is that because of accidents or? No, the rate, I found out last year this is based on a 2012 decision. Um, you know, about, about different plans, you could enter like retro and what have you. And at that time, they were also offering uh, rebates if you participate in a certain plans. And I understand that the city received, when I called them, I got the bill because I was alarmed. And I was told back in 2012 or thereabout, there was um, a big financial benefit to the city by joining whatever the plan was. And a lot of the cities did this, I guess, especially if they were in need of some dollars, maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars or something of this nature. But it put you into another plan. And I guess we did sign up this past year with the new plan, retro, I think it's retrospect, um, what was comp. The um, HR director probably could speak more to it, but it's all about the plan that you're in. And so we were not in a plan that would afford us a lower rate. So after last year, we upped it. And I get this walking deal. <laughs> so we so had to increase. Because we missed a payment. Oh, no. Our bills are within 30 days aging. We're very current on our bills. We're about 30 days aging. And there were bills when I came two or three years behind, but we caught up with all of that. Okay, so that was the mechanics and um, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm just mumbling. What are we putting on the ballot this year? We have projected for election expenses. Well, you have to pay that That's one. Fixed expense. You yeah. have a primary in March, presidential yeah. primary. Mm -hmm. okay. right. I think so then if we have any levies or anything that we want to put on that ballot, mm -hmm. I'd like to put it on the ballot. Like so fixed expense. I don't mm -hmm. remember that. Also, on page 8, uh, on the legal, you notice that I almost double the uh, professional services and this, this is the way we pay attorneys. We had quite a few this year, 2015, and also with labor negotiations, you know. I think we just have the police now to settle, but I'm sure it's going to run, I'm not sure, but the likelihood of it running into 2016, which means that there will be some additional labor expenses. And of course, I think everybody knows the other expenses that we paid were not planned or budgeted. So I thought I'd better kick it up to about $50,000. Are we 
Yes. Okay. Can we go back to page seven? Sure. Mayor's office and the finance department, please. Sure. Do you have a specific <coughs> question you to ask? Or? No, just give us an overview. I mean, oh, you, okay. you skip right over that page, I think. Well, I'm just pulling out the highlights of significant, where there were significant changes. Oh, okay. I mean, that's why I skipped it, because the change was only $3,000. But I mean, I could go through each one if you want me to. Well, on the uh, salary line, you'll see. And like I say, in 2015, which is this year, I get my year straight. Um, so what are we doing there? I think the part of that, if I remember, was a carryover from 14 when we did the budgeting and we had projected some payouts. And I think that number was probably still carried over to 15, although there really weren't any for salaries. But, uh, and then also in 2016, there's an ordinance that the mayor's salary will be reduced. Uh, it was enacted, I think, in 2012. It was 2012-56, I think it was, mm -hmm. where the mayor's salary was reduced to about 80000 85000 80000 So oh. that's one of the reasons for the, uh, the main reason, actually, for the change of salaries. Well, under medical, you got a 15 from 7,000 to projected 16 to 26. Under medical? Mm -hmm. Well, I projected that because the current mayor does not have the medical plan. A family plan runs about $19,000 a year. I assume that maybe our mayor elect may elect to take the family plan, so I thought I'd better budget for it. If she doesn't use it, it's about $19,000 a year. So you never knew what a great deal you had. <laughs> there goes the money you cut the mayor's pay. It goes right back in. Uh, any more questions? You know that stuff about karma. <laughs> you want to go to finance? <laughs> yes, please. Okay, in finance. Um, a couple of things happened in 2015. We had budgeted for a payroll clerk. As you know, the payroll clerk actually left, the uh, administrator left in 2014, the year I came. So we basically have been doubling up doing the payroll ourselves. We did use Reed as an assistant for a while. And so one of the things in terms of the salaries and our finances that we didn't have a payroll clerk that was budgeted last year, 2015. Um, the other thing too, in reviewing uh, the various salaries and allocations, we have found that we can reallocate some various salaries. I mean, for example, um, the two staff persons in the finance other than myself does direct service to some of the other departments. One of the examples is Jana um, Crosby. Jana spends a lot of time in actually handling and doing all the receipts and balancing the checks and reconciliations. And a lot of that is from the mayor's court. So we charged a small portion of her salary to the mayor's court since she spends work directly with uh, Brevlin and reconciling the checkbooks and making deposits and what have you. So that reduced, I think about 12, 10 or 12 percent of her salary came out of finance to go to the mayor's court. Um, then the same with Melissa. Melissa spends a lot of time uh, actually with service items. I mean, you know, she's basically our receptionist and most all the calls that we receive a lot of them either pertains to the building or to uh, service and around waste collections and that. So part of her salary, about 10% was charged to the waste collection fund. And so that sort of moves some salaries out of finance into some of the other departments where the staff spends a lot of direct service time. Uh, let's see. In terms of medical, 
the increase there is hopefully that we will we are recruiting for a payroll administrator because like I say we can't continue to work all the extra hours to do payroll to feel that uh, responsibility so again budgeted a single uh, plan for health for that person and uh, and correspondingly you know there were some changes with the uh, OPERS and other benefits. In terms of the actual operations or other expenditures, we spend very little. Um, and then some of them are common expenses that are charged to the common fund, the uh, miscellaneous fund for the city, such as the computers and all of that. At one time, all of that was being charged to the finance department like the service contracts on some of the equipment and different things like that. So I moved it out of finance because this is a common shared expense. Okay, we talked about legal election, uh, the engineering. I also bought that up. As you know, for professional service, we use CVE, uh, and there's several projects that's in the works where there's uh, whatever he does, plans, specs, and whatever he does. So just trying not to be under budget. So I just up that a little bit too. Page nine. I'm sorry, did you have any other questions, Councilman? No. Okay. okay, page nine, lands and buildings. We have a couple work, three workers in lands and buildings, which is the maintenance, uh, the animal warden, and who's <coughs> the third person? The animal warden and the maintenance assistant on their lands and buildings. And a lot of the expenses you see, like I say, are common expenses, utilities, and expenses to operate the building. Uh, so you will see uh, the various utilities and all. And some you'll see is higher than budgeted for this year. Some are lower based on the trend, the trending, uh, in terms of what our bills are averaging. And IT, I budget some extra. We've had a lot of problems with our system. Just had a big overhaul on the voicemail. Some of you may know that the voicemail wasn't working for many days in the long distance over the police department. And so in calling in these people to repair, um, I just thought, again, I'm being told that our system is very antiquated and old. But I know that we probably don't have um, money right now to purchase one of the small things the guy said when he fixed the voicemails that the system had overheated. So he suggested that we put an air conditioner in the room to keep the system cool. So Greg put some fans in there for now. But otherwise they won't warrant, uh, put a warranty on it. He just said that even though they fixed it and it's quite expensive because of the heat factor, they were not guaranteed. So unless it was a certain temperature in terms of coolness to keep the system from overheating. So little things like that we got to look for next year and how to do that or to move it to another room or some things. So we have a smoke detector in that room. <laughs> it would probably stay up. I don't know what I have. Did you put a pad or do you Oh, mm -hmm. oh, much cool. Okay. Yeah. I really don't know how to do it. I'm just okay. coming with 